Walk into a medieval hall, barn, or bridge house, and you'll find wood that has faced rain, insects, soil moisture, and centuries of temperature swings without the help of paint, tar, or chemical preservatives. Some of these timbers have been exposed since before modern nations existed, yet they remain structurally sound. This wasn't luck, and it wasn't ignorance. Medieval builders knew exactly how rot worked, and more importantly, how to stop it before it ever started. They did it without coating wood or sealing it off from the world. Instead, they use preparation, timing, heat, airflow, and design to make wood naturally resistant to decay. What they practiced is still usable today by anyone building fences, sheds, or long-term outdoor structures. You know, medieval builders saw rot not as some inevitable fate, but really as a process that could be interrupted. They believed that with a bit of know-how, you could step in and change the outcome. Rot doesn't just show up out of nowhere. Medieval craftsmen understood that for decay to take hold, you needed three things. Moisture, oxygen, and something inside the wood that fungi could actually digest. If you managed to reduce even one of those, well, rot would slow down quite a lot. Rather than, you know, scrambling to block moisture after everything was built, they put their efforts into removing the conditions that rot depended on before they even started. The idea was to make the wood as unwelcoming as possible for fungi and insects right from the start. You know, this way of thinking is really the key difference between medieval durability and modern failure. The timing of tree cutting, well, it actually mattered more than most people realize. One of the first anti-rot steps, believe it or not, happened before a tool ever touched the wood. Trees were commonly cut in winter, when sap levels were lowest. Well, sap carries sugars, and those sugars... They feed decay organisms. After felling, bark was removed early to prevent insects from nesting and, you know, to stop moisture from being trapped against the surface. These simple choices, really, gave medieval timber a natural advantage that, honestly, modern lumber rarely has. The core of medieval rot prevention was patience. Timber was air-seasoned for years, not weeks. Logs and beams were stacked off the ground, protected from rain and exposed to moving air. This slow drying allowed moisture to leave evenly, preventing cracks and internal stress. More importantly, sugars inside the wood oxidized and broke down over time. This chemical change made the wood far less attractive to fungi. Modern kiln drying removes water quickly but leaves sugars intact. Medieval seasoning changed the wood's internal makeup, not just its moisture level. You can apply this today by storing outdoor lumber under cover for extended periods, even a year or two longer than recommended. The improvement in durability is, you know, quite noticeable. Smoke and gentle heat quietly finished the job. Many medieval timbers spent years in smoky environments. 
Longhouses, workshops and barns all had open hearths, and wood stored in rafters absorbed smoke continuously. Smoke contains compounds that inhibit fungal growth and discourage insects. Gentle heat from the fire drove out remaining moisture without damaging the grain. Over time, this combination hardened the wood and reduced its ability to absorb water later. This wasn't accidental. Medieval builders knew that wood exposed to smoke lasted longer. You can see the evidence today in old barn beams that outperform newer replacements despite having no surface coating. Medieval builders also stopped rot through intelligent design. Roofs were steep, shedding water quickly. Overhangs were generous, protecting walls and posts from direct rain. Wooden elements were raised off the ground whenever possible to allow airflow underneath. Joints were designed to drain rather than trap water, you know. These choices reduced long-term moisture exposure without relying on sealants. In your own projects, elevating posts slightly above soil, allowing air gaps and avoiding water-trapping joints can, well, dramatically extend wood life. In some cases, medieval builders used controlled heat on wood that would face harsh conditions. Posts and beams were warmed over embers or briefly exposed to flame. This collapsed microscopic pathways inside the wood that normally absorb water. Light surface scorching hardened the outer layer without turning it into charcoal. So, this process made wood more resistant to moisture and insects without applying any coating. These days, slowly heating fence posts or ground contact beams before installation can provide similar benefits, especially when, you know, it's combined with a long seasoning period. Paints, tars and chemical treatments were not always available, but, well, medieval builders also understood their limitations. You know, a surface coating can fail, crack or even trap moisture. And once that happens, well, rot really starts to accelerate. By preparing the wood itself, medieval builders ensured that even if the surface wore away, the timber underneath, it still remained resistant. Their method didn't depend on constant reapplication or perfect coverage. It depended on the wood being uh, fundamentally stable. You don't need medieval tools to use medieval wisdom. Start by choosing wood carefully and letting it season longer than usual. Store it off the ground with good airflow. Expose it to gentle heat or smoke when possible. Design structures to shed water and allow air circulation. Avoid burying wood directly in soil when you can. You know, even applying just a few of these principles can, well, double or even triple the lifespan of outdoor wood. A shed stays solid, a fence post stays firm, and uh, a garden structure ages slowly instead of failing suddenly. Medieval builders, they built for permanence because, honestly, replacement was costly and even dangerous. Their methods were, you could say, refined through careful observation, not just theory. 
In a modern world that, frankly, is built around replacement, these techniques really do offer a way back to durability and self-reliance. So, if you want more forgotten building knowledge, serious historical insight, and, well, practical techniques that still work today, make sure you subscribe to Backyard Wisdom and share this video with others who care about craftsmanship that truly lasts.